No way. More like, no way you can survive the invasion from the Germans. Well, historical game. 1936, Norway is known for its independence, prosperous merchant marine, and also political stability. Beneath the surface, though, Norway was facing challenges that would soon test its resilience. So Norway wanted to remain neutral, similar to, uh, I guess, Switzerland and Sweden, and they adopted a strategy of neutrality. This approach failed with their objective to try and convince both sides that Norway was completely harmless. As a result, the Allies and the Axis powers began planning to invade Norway due to its strategic importance. So unfortunately, Norway, no, we don't really need your land or your territory. It is just a strategic significance due to its access to the Atlantic Ocean and the upcoming battle for the Atlantic. National spirits, the broken national spirits. So this one, he's got a blindfold. That's not good. Uh, the gun is broken. That's not good. Uh, the piggy bank has been broken. That's not good. And this kind of looks like a commie star. Maybe as of the four, this is probably the better one of the four. Maybe we'll see. A complacent cabinet. Losing political power, division training time. Oh my goodness. Everything just costs way more political power. And your theorist cost goes up by 100%. So investments into the economy, trade, as well as your military th doctrine, as well as your military doctrine is significantly nerfed. However, you do have access to a theorist here. Oh, wow. I see you have access to him, but he's just straight up penalties all around. So 10% cheaper doctrine, which I think is a little bit more than the normal because it's only 5%, isn't it? So overall, you're getting better doctrine buffs, but overall the cost for this guy, as well as he causes your conscription laws to go up significantly, is going to be a pain. But remember, in a normal game of Hoi 4, the amount of manpower you have access to for Norway is quite small to begin with. So limiting your conscription is just going to hurt even more. The hardest part of being democratic Norway is you're forced onto limited conscription and you can't go too extensive until you join the war. But then when you join the war, it's kind of already a little bit too late. So in that instance, you don't have really have time to conscript more manpower, which might actually be the situation that Norway found itself in. It was reliant on Britain to send troops over to defend itself. This focus is really interesting. Obsolete armed forces. Speed. Oh, so bad. Organization. Oh my God, that's eye-watering. Attack division penalty. Minus 30%. Oh my goodness, you're just not attacking. You're just defending. But then you're not defending very good either because your land fort effectiveness is reduced by 50%. So I think this is kind of like a little bit of a balance nerf thing where it's like, well, we'll just build forts, will we? That'll defend ourselves against the Germans. But these forts have 50% less effectiveness. So the amount you get out of a fort normally is so significantly less that it's just not going to be cost effective to make forts. So it just looks like you're going to be defending, but with all the penalties stacked on top as well. The hard 30s. No, I was wrong. I thought the fourth one was going to be okay. And it suffered from a massive consumer goods factor and a massive construction penalty. So, no way. Everything sucks. <laughs> <laughs> everything sucked okay so this is the broken piggy bank so it says that norway got affected quite heavily by the great depression hence the broken piggy bank but the final one is the anti-communist sentiment which gives ticking fascism oh not bordering the soviet union but huh i wonder if that might change a little bit later on huh huh maybe here we go. The first look at the focus tree. National spirits. Here we go. Continue. The government. Not going to attempt to pronounce that. Broken gun policies leaving the 30s behind. So you kind of want to fix your economy at the end of the day. You want to be able to make mills. It might be interesting to take advantage of the new market mechanics to try and pull guns from other nations. It looks like we've got some alt history focus down the left here. Weathering the storm to come. It makes me wonder if Paradox might try a slightly different direction of Norway because you've not got a strong industrial base to begin with, but maybe you give it the incentive to build that industrial base. Become kind of like a Switzerland of Scandinavia. I think that's something that Paradox don't explore very frequently. The idea of an alt history where a small nation becomes an industrial powerhouse. It's almost like, well, a nation starts off with a relatively small industry and that's kind of where they stay with a few buffs you get from the focus tree. Because it'd be kind of cool to have like a, again, example, Japan, Cold War focus that shows the economic boom in the 50s and 60s of Japan. I know that's not alt history, but why not have an alt history path where there is an economic explosion in a smaller nation, for instance? Alt history seems to always be revolve around the different ideologies. It never touches on like military or it doesn't really touch upon the economy. I thought that'd be an interesting change because to be fair, Norway does discover oil later on, I think in the 60s. 
So maybe they could touch upon that in the very late focuses to give like a massive economic boom to Norway. That would be kind of cool. I understand it's not within the time period of Hoi 4, but it'd be kind of nice if they touched upon it just for extra flavor. So interestingly, to begin with, you're fixing your gun policies. Then you cut the military budget, bail out the towns. Oh my God, there's so many problems. So they're all economic based, roughly. But my favorite, oh, my favorite is, why don't we just print more money? <laughs> What? You're low on money? Why don't you just print some more? Hmm? So, if you want to develop Norway properly, you have to complete the focus broken guns policy policies, which will lock you out of most of the military focuses. Gives you access to the central decision system for a historical Norway. And here we go. Oh, this is interesting. Bit of a guess here. This develops regions, so therefore you can build full industry within them and gain access to bonuses. However, the downside to this is this limits your military expansion. So it's basically a choice. Do you want to defend the West or the East? Or in Norway's case, do you want to build civilian industry or military industry? It's going to be cool if you try and go away from this and focus primarily on military and just see how well you can defend yourself. I'll definitely give that a try. I loved playing as a defensive nation and see if I can defend against the swarms. Playing Finland, defending against the Soviet Union is so fun. And I feel like it's going to be so fun to play Norway and defense, defend against Germany. So the first bonus here is you gain access to more local manpower for the first tick. You gain civilian construction at 25%. Wow, that's huge. However, you lose construction for forts. And Norway's total preparedness will increase by one. So it seems to me there's like a preparedness meter wonder if this will take advantage of the balance of power, which means you mitigate some of the penalties for your army, I'm presuming, and fill in the gaps. It's recommended that you prioritize civilian development before the war, aligning with the historical events. And of course, if the game says to me, you have to do it this way, of course, I'm going to be like, well, what if I try it another way? Huh? What if I want to try the military path? Possible. So Norway has one of the largest merchant fleets in the world. And these focuses here do a wide range of different things. A lot of them are defense and emergency production, but all of them cost some of your convoys. So you're using convoys as like a currency, which is just, it's just so cool because it's so different. It's always something I wanted to see for like, for instance, for China, you can use manpower as a currency because you basically have unlimited amount of it. So it'd be kind of cool if you could use that for some emergency developments as a part of your country as such. But then you've got to think of the consequences of what you're actually doing there. You know, like are these people getting sacrificed. You know what I mean? It obviously has repercussions of what it could mean in game. So level one, as we saw before, does this. It also adds a defense modifier for that state. I'm usually against these because I feel like it overly complicates the game. And it's frustrating sometimes when you just have one river over you gain a defense bonus but the one before it you don't gain anything i just think that's a really weird system and you gain recovery ray entrenchment speed max entrenchment and encirclement penalty Ugh, it's okay i guess the next one on the other hand you gain so local resources manpower civilian construction railways Honestly, hand on heart, I don't think I'll ever take advantage of this. It's one of those mid situations where it doesn't give you a big enough benefit to worth your time to want to do it. Oh, actually, adding the military factory is pretty big, actually. I've got to say this again, and I, and I hate to do it, because once again, I like what Paradox is doing with these focuses. The big, however, is be, just be very careful with tooltip spam. I feel like sometimes if you have to hover over it and like pause for a good 10 seconds to read it, I feel like it could be summed up a lot easier, put it that way. I do think, though, on here, the highlights are definitely the civilian factory output and the extra extra mill that it adds on as well. Maybe if you're really desperate for manpower, maybe manpower would be useful too. Develop the militias. So what we got here? Oh my God, tooltip overload. You know what would be kind of cute? If all the red ones were grouped together and all the green ones are grouped together. Listen, I'm not asking for the world here, okay? I just want, I feel like it, it, it shouldn't be a sort, it shouldn't be a short story to understand what a decision does. And that is, uh, that is pretty intense. This one creates two militia units as well. It feels like the sweet spot to me is the middle ground here. The one dot, the two dots is the best one because it gains the mill. And the third one just gives you extra disposable militia, I suppose. So that, for me, the sweet spot is number two. Hit the subscribe button if you're taking a number two right now. The fascist invasion of Norway as tensions escalate. The German invasion of Norway becomes imminent. The event foreshadows the impending conflict and presents choices for the player to make its response. 
uh, to a coup. Okay, so you can actually do the fascist path. Fascist invasion of Norway. Will you collaborate or will you resist against the Norwegians? That's really interesting. I wonder if in a situation when the Brits didn't actually defend Norway, whether it would have just fallen to the Germans, but as a collaboration state and not necessarily full defense against democracy. Maybe asking you, sir, what's the deal with the fascist invasion of Norway focus on this side? And I say, don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. What are you doing? Look, I love this how he zooms in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Enhance. As I told you already, nothing important is happening here. And here, have the focus with a doggo. The satisfaction of completing a focus with a cute dog on the icon. Paradox. You're hiding things. I'm on to you. Sussy. And this is actually what the focus will be. Will be auto-completed when attacked by a fascist nation. It specifically says a fascist nation. That's really interesting. This gives you a massive amount of war support, political power, lose your stability, and you lose fascism. Interesting. I'm sorry to LARP this. However, what if you're in a multiplayer game and some small fascist nation declares you just to take advantage of this? It'd be kind of cool though, wouldn't it? I suppose. It's interesting how it doesn't specifically designate this as Germany that's declaring war, which I think is really cool because that means the devs are thinking of all the different possibilities of all history that could actually happen, which is, I think, is one of the hardest parts to develop in these focus trees. Thinking of what all the possibilities the players could actually do, or the AI with historical turn on, is so unbelievably broad. So it looks like with fascism growing in Norway naturally, eventually, if it gets too much, you can eventually have a coup and then i presume the fascists will take power so it is a matter of trying to stay loyal to norway uh, to mitigate this eventual coup that can happen or you fall prey to the coup and that's how you flip to fascists so we know how you're going to go democratic now we know how historical is going to work and kind of we actually kind of know in this case how the fascist path will go and we can actually see the coup here but this part on the right kind of looks like monarchist i'm taking a guess i don't actually know but if you go left it's going to probably going to be the commies on this part and then the fascists on this path taking a, just a sweet old guess pan germanic cooperation and the secret police what is this victoria three we like that icon there with the wolf that's nice and there's some very interesting focuses in the bottom right here so we have a viking ship here and then we have the option to go back to some very ahistorical claims by the vikings <laughs> vinland scotland and ireland also Denmark as well. Nice. If you're going to go fascist from the get-go or delay the coup, you can complete this seven-day focus at any time and start playing as fascist. It auto-completes if you switch sides. So here we go. The coup has happened. You suffer from some pretty painful penalties, but you get a big chunk of fascism and it's only a seven-day focus. New seven-day focus meta? Is this where we're heading? Please no. And then immediately after you flip to fascism, you can actually elect a proper leader, not just a, a stopgap in this case. Suffering from more stability and war support penalties. So for things to be fixed, you need to break it to begin with. We're making the most ultimate omelette, boys. So if you are currently fascist and you are at peace, which I presume this is after the war, I guess, you potentially can remove the contested leadership and actually have a proper fascist leader, I presume. There is a final option, though, to finally bring back the stopgap and bring back the original guy. Do you want him or not? Decide. Once again, it is slowly moving towards a bit of a tooltip spam, though. I never understood sometimes why you get a very small amount of ticking for a certain ideology if you're already the ideology when it doesn't even function within the focus tree anymore. It would kind of make sense as like a tool to slow down the focus tree. So for instance, if it requires 30% support for fascism, you would incentivize to, to kind of have this. So therefore you can unlock that focus later on. But I always think it's kind of strange that like just random advisors or random leaders give ticking fascism. And then we have this. Jonas Lai Ku. The Coop becomes the leader of the fascist party and he's a germophile officer and he gains 0 0.25 daily of army XP gain. That can't be right. <laughs> That's way too high. <laughs> I love it. I'll tell you one thing, guys. You ain't going fascist for the stability. That's for certain because every one of these just destroy your stab and every single one of them uh, also reduce resistance for the invaders too. So we welcome the invaders and the claims. Claims on Denmark, Sweden and Bajinland. <laughs> Trust me, I see your comments, okay? I see them. Regardless of the chosen ideology, there are common branches that focus on industry and armed forces development. Paradox, I've learned the lesson here because this is the best way of doing it. Having the Spanish focus tree path where like the industry is included with the ideological ones, just it makes a really linear focus tree and it's not very exciting. But now we have all branches individually separated regardless of what ideological path you go down. It'd be kind of cool if they rename themselves to have a little bit of flavor based on 
uh, what ideology you went for. But apart from that, it's really cool that they did it this way because at least now you have actual choice, not just this linear railroad path that you do have with maybe Spain. There's probably some others too. Comment below. We have an interesting focus here, which gives three forts for 35 days. I think this is kind of worth it. You know what the ultimate fix would be for this? Here's a, a big brain suggestion for Paradox. Instead of just giving us forts, why not give us 500% construction time in this region for, I don't know, for, for three months or something instead of just giving us forts in a fixed location? Because there's not much flexibility with this one. It's like, well, I've got to have the forts and they've got to be in that said location. I haven't got much of a choice. Wouldn't it be cool to give the player kind of more control by saying you can build them, but if you build them within this said state, you get a big construction bonus? I don't know. I, I think that would be a better... I think that would be better because it would be a little bit more freedom to the player. Okay, now we're entering Norwegian patriotism territory. Do you know the buses from last week? Do you know the ship that sunk in the harbor for Sweden from last week? But well, now we have the one tank. That's right. That's right. Norway had one tank for the war. Just the one. It is the Rick Stanken. And if you get this focus, which is 70 days, you'll be rewarded with a single light tank. The Rick Stanken is a humorous and inadequate tank, highlighting the challenges of Norway's face in terms of military technology. The focus tree provides options for acquiring the Rick Stanken and utilizing it to the best of its abilities. And here it is, boys. This is what it was meant to look like. And this is kind of what it was. It's like a tent. It's a tent machine gun on tracks amazing that the norwegians they tried bless them they tried so you can really dig into the old history of this by as you can see in this circumstance try and build a tank program based around it working with the soviets or the germans as well as focuses that invest more into this legacy of the mythical tank well it's not mythical it actually exists but um i guess invest it in a way where it actually comes more viable and here it is boys look at that actually that looks that's a cute tank model actually I'd buy a few of those. Is that a machine gun on top? Nice. Machine gun tanks. Of course, this beauty will not be able to tour the whole kingdom. All 11 states. We have new states in Norway. So you got one, two, three, four, five in the south. Six. And then we've got four in the north as well. And they've conveniently put these big, um, big, they've got these big sensors in the top left and top right here. And uh, this is sussy to me. They're hiding something. What is happening here? What is going on? I'm a bit, I'm a bit curious now. Is there something about Gotland you're not showing us? No? Or something about the Baltics? Maybe something about Iceland? Hmm? Hmm? Please comment below, boys. I'm curious to see what Paradox are hiding from us. And here are all the state names. Wow. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet. There is another state for Norway, and it is Jan Mayen. Uh, the myth, the legend of 10 people in total, famous for its polar bear population in Victoria 2. Does he even have polar bears? Something tells me he actually doesn't. I don't know. It feels weird to say this, but I think I'm the most excited for the Norwegian focus tree. Not for its content, just for how simple it is and how well I know the history of Norway during this period. So kind of wanting to remain neutral, divided between the commies and the fascists, invaded by the fascists eventually to eventually hold back against the Germans. And I think the idea of defending against the Germans in this situation seems really fun for me. Now, I played on a normal game of Norway and it, it was kind of tricky. However, I did manage to hold out. So I'd imagine with this focus tree, it might become a little bit more difficult. I'm excited to give Norway a blast. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more of this kind of content. And right here is another video for you. I guarantee it will be a fun one. Eb.